Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at MatsuriCon 2018 with my pal, Mr. Keiji Tang. How you doing? Good, good. Good seeing you again, man. You know, it's been a little bit. Two years. Yeah, glad we, we got a chance to hang out this weekend. Yeah, oh, we've definitely been hanging out this weekend. <laughs> uh, it's been two years uh, since we last time we talked to you. It was at ColossalCon 2016. Yeah. How have you been in that last two years? Good, man, good. Uh, things have been real busy. Um, you know, had that weird little health scare for a second, yeah. but... Uh, uh, recently, too. Oh, recently, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I have a very uh, new and profound appreciation for um, uh, health insurance. <laughs> 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 uh, but other than that, yeah, really great, man, really great. Uh, have you been doing good, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been doing okay. Uh, and again, um, going into your career here, uh, since last time we talked, you've now become part of the Fire Hero, uh, Fire Emblem, yeah, Fire Heroes. Fire Heroes. <laughs> Literally on fire. <laughs> 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 so you you joined the Fire Emblem team under Heroes and Fates. What's it like been working on both games and then the fan response to both games? Oh, fantastic, dude! Like uh, it, it 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 really um it. it it's great for me because I was a I was a huge fan of Fire Emblem uh, uh, just before I even got involved with voiceover. So to be a part of that kind of franchise, to be a part of that kind of community, it, it's really heartwarming. I I love the characters I play. They're so filled with like so much quirkiness and yeah. fun, you know. Um, Owain, like Narcy, and all those guys. I I'm privileged and touched to be able to have just a tiny stake in that kind of universe because oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, and you know, like so many more heroes now too. I know, right? It's yeah, like, it's like the uh, Fire Emblem heroes. If you haven't played, it's for it's for the phone game it's like collecting voice actors the game it's it's great <laughs> uh, which is which is funny uh, and then again um, a really big thing is the fate family and you're still in this huge project it's been growing you know they've they've not just done unlimited blade works now you got uh, uh, heaven, fields. heaven fields you got uh, the I, I can't even keep track of them because I haven't been able to watch any of them so like what's it like for you to obviously be you know be archer in various forms throughout time uh, again, really great, and, and I, I feel like I'm repeating about the Fire Emblem Heroes thing, but I, I also, like, you know, when I was when I was younger, I played through uh, Fate Stay Night, the visual novel, so I've been I've been part of this fandom for quite a while, you know, I was there for the rise of Garcher, you know, that whole meme. Um, so, yeah, to be able to step in the shoes of a character like Archer is is, is literally a bucket list moment, you know, I'm, I'm, I know I'm so lucky, and, and I'm so honored to, to step into those boots. Um, and and you're right. The Fates franchise just sort of seems to be it's taking. Be yeah. I, I watched the original Fates Day Night series. Because like <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched the original. I have the original on DVDs, yeah. disc by disc. Bandai original release. Fates oh, Day man. Night with Sam Regal it's and Studio Dean, right? Right, yeah, right, right, right. And then of course you have uh, you you took over. I mean, I'm give you a lot of props. Because you took over for Liam O'Brien, who had that just voice oh. that carried Archer. No, oh, yeah. oh, trust me. I like when I first got the audition. First of all, I was like, "What? Liam's not coming back? What? What is this travesty?" Yeah. And then, and then when I booked it, I was like, oh, oh, "How do I follow that?" But you know, we went we went kind of a different direction with Archer. Right. We we really wanted to focus more on on the fact that he's a nihilistic, um, you know, like he's just yeah, really he's down. Hero that just says, screw yeah. the world. Yeah, yeah. And while well, Liam, I felt like was a much more superhero interpretation right. of the character. And, oh, he sounded fantastic. Shiro was kind of doing when he was with yeah. Saber, but then maybe when he becomes Archer, Absolutely. it's a whole other ball game on being yeah. the superhero. Absolutely. Right. And I'm just so touched and so thrilled that the Fate franchise just seems to be taking off. Um, I love the universe. I love everything about it. It's my Disneyland, you know? So every time I get to come back to it, it's just such a thrill and such a privilege and such an honor. So I hope it, I hope it keeps going. And uh, kind of working with even more uh, well-known voice actors is that you are now one of only about maybe three people in the world to ever voice Vegeta <laughs> for uh, Dragon Ball related to the uh, the Pacific Asian right. dub. Right, right. right, and you know, Sabbath's just a wonderful guy and he's easy to work with. Have you talked to him about like getting into the Prince of Saiyans mentality when you go in and record for it? Well, only in that, you know, I've watched DBZ growing up, right? right? So I'm very, very familiar with the Sabbath DBZ. So, um, you know, I, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to stray too, too far from like the, like, I really love the accent, you know, the real, right. the royal lilt, right? right? Because in the original, um, in the original Japanese, uh, uh, Goku just kind of has this kind of rural uh, thing going on. And that's the big, like, divide between their characters, right? Too, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Vegeta sounds much more upper class and royal. Like, educated. Exactly. Right. So I wanted to keep some of that. I, I kind of, like, combined the, uh, 
uh, Brian Drummond and uh, uh, Sabat Vegeta into the Southeast Asian. Uh, <laughs> I got a Canadian. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Canadian. Just <laughs> I got to put them together a little bit. Right, right, right. I wanted it to be in the same ballpark because I love that kind of archetype, right? But you're never really prepared to step into the shoes of a character like that, you know? When you're sitting in the booth for the first time and you hear those beeps counting down to the first Vegeta line, yeah. like, what do you even do, right? Um, but yeah, it's again, it's it's um, I, I'm I'm honored and thrilled to to have like a little part in the DB's uh, Dragon Ball franchise, and and you know um, uh, I'll I'll remember it forever. You know, <laughs> like I said, I've I've interviewed both of you, so it's wonderful to talk to you guys both about being the Prince of Saiyans. Um, now this is really an honor for you, is that you got to step into the very first time Pikachu ever gets to speak in Detective P Pikachu as Pikachu. Uh, what was it like to do that, knowing that Pokemon is now 20 plus years old? has a huge fan base and has never stopped being awesome what was it like when they're like you get to be the very first time Pikachu actually has a voice and of course you had to follow with the awesome uh, fan clip of Danny DeVito being right. Pikachu <laughs> yes it's all oh, that Danny DeVito meme was so good um yeah but I like I I um when I first got the audition for it, it was, it was very thrilling. I didn't, I didn't think I was probably going to get it because it's like, wow, this is, this is pretty huge, right? When you, when you get a role uh, that, like that across your table, you really never think less. like, oh, yeah, obviously, this is where I'm totally going to book this. But when I did is um, it, it, I, I was at first uh, kind of like uh, afraid that people w would think that he sounds that way because of the Danny DeVito meme, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, so you saw the meme, right? That's why it sounds that way. Yeah. But I was reassured by Nintendo that he was always going to sound that way before the meme hit but it was such oh it was so much fun yeah. and and the game was so well written and I remember I remember I had a lot of laughs because when they first announced Detective Pikachu and they played the first few clips of him talking uh, people on like Twitter exploded they were like what happened to Pikachu? Did he take up smoking? What, what did he have kids? Like, does he have like three divorces? What happened? You know, but yeah, yeah exactly. Can you teach me about taxes? What happened to this guy? Um, but, but, but no, it was so much fun. And I'm, so, I'm so, uh, so excited to hear the live action version. Cause I don't know if you guys know, but, um, next, uh, next year, 2009, during the summer, the live action Ryan Reynolds version of Detective Pikachu will hit theaters, yeah. right? Oh, I'm, I'm psyched yeah. to hear his take on it. But yeah, it, it was it's an absolute privilege and thrill to voice Detective Pikachu. I'm pretty sure a lot of the fans that love Pokemon have, have just poured their hearts out to you about doing it. And I, I see that every once in a while on Twitter when I go through your Twitter feed every once in a while. So, and another great game that came out within the last two years is Persona 5. I mean, you, I, it's always so much fun because I, I still, the only memory I have of it while my friend was playing was when he's trying to woo Stephanie Shea because she's the, she's the maid. And that's the only time I've ever seen anybody play that game. And so, but I, I still love it to this day. And I'm pretty sure a lot of fans love it. So how was it like when you got to play the game? And, and I know you play the game and then on top of that, be in the game. <laughs> Well, I, uh, you know, I, I played Persona since uh, Persona 3, and it's it's a great game. I really love the combat mechanics in Persona, the, the demon fusing, all that stuff. So being able to step into Persona, again, was a great honor and privilege. But, um, like, for EY, uh, I remember when we re first recorded him, like, he had, I was so excited to play the game because he had so much weird dialogue. If you just leave the uh, menu screen open when you're in a shop, he just starts talking to you about random stuff. Like, he starts <laughs> commenting about, like, the anime community and stuff like that. And and you're like, yeah, it's weird, right? And he's like, what are you going to do with that battle axe? Like, that's weird that you bought that, right? <laughs> so EY, EY was was hilarious to voice. And um, I, and the game is just so good. Yeah. It's long, but it's, yeah. oh, it's yeah. so good. It's like, you know, the stereotypical 80-hour plus. Yeah, I <laughs> know, right? Yeah. Oh, and, and you know what's unfair? It's completely unfair that as we grow older, yeah. we get the money to buy the games, but we, we lose the time to play them, you know? And, and, and you know, I kind of... I, you, it almost makes you miss the time that it was the opposite, you know. But um, Persona is a very special game. It's always been a special game. It's always been amazingly written, and the characters have always been so vibrant. And I hope, I hope the series continues to, to infinity. Personally, you know, because well, it, it looks, it, it, it's an inner look at humanity yeah. through the game, and I think a lot of fans get it, but also don't get it at the Absolutely. same time because they're like, it's an RPG, yeah. but it's dealing with real world topics. Like uh, I think it is. It's, it's either. Uh, Crispin Freeman's character in four right. that is the um, has to come to grips with being LGBT right and that's right, right, right. like such a big deal that like 
you know, you guys have to give that off to fans that are also dealing with that issue and portray right. it correctly. No, so absolutely. I give a lot of props to you guys when it comes up to the more serious topics that are in those games. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's some of the some of the stuff in there is really cinematic, and I really appreciate that. Though I will say, I'm kind of hoping for an EY DLC for the dancing game. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that would be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> And then another uh, another fun thing that maybe some fans may not know about you is that you love playing Magic the Gathering with your wife as well, who was here this weekend. And uh, on top of that, we were discussing privately that Magic is now going to do a crossover with D&D, which yes. you play and yes. do a D&D podcast on Mondays with Ravnica. Yes. So what's it like when both your both your nerdy passions like merge in together? I dude, I don't know if you were there like watching my face when I learned it. Oh, I was thrilled. I don't know what I told yeah, exactly, exactly. I like I lost my crap. Um, <laughs> no, 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 like it, it's it's it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it, it makes person the Wizards of the Coast. It's a brilliant move. Um, so I, I think they're releasing a uh, like a rule book or like yeah. a side adventure and series and yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I. I'm really psyched to see if they like start introducing class mechanics from like magic into it. <gasps> Are you serious? I think so. Oh no! Wait, wait. Uh, no, if we're gonna have playable planeswalkers, this is the greatest thing to ever happen <laughs> to fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. All right, I am gonna straight up be a planeswalker for the rest of my D and D career. <laughs> um, but for those of you who don't play uh, Magic: The Gathering, Ravnica is a beautiful, beautiful expansion to the card game. Mm -hmm. It's a world. It's a realm completely covered in a cityscape right so if you play magic you know that the lands you use are based like forests mountains all that stuff right in Ravnica the lands are just white cityscapes dark cityscapes you know red slums and you know green like garden cities it's some of the most beautiful land art in existence and I'm thrilled to see it translate over into a D&D &D game it's perfect so yeah I'm I'm I, I'm gonna incorporate it pretty quickly into my game so I don't know about you guys also introduce the uh, dual land for playable yes. mana cost Yes, and, yes, and magic. Absolutely. So you wonder how that the magic element of yeah. magic will then come into and, into and, D and D. There might be some you know cameos from the established planeswalkers yeah. coming into the game. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Be so good. <laughs> All righty, now we've talked a lot about your projects, and we know about the little piece of paper you have to sign before you start on a project called an NDA. Yeah. What projects are currently available for fans to check out that we didn't discuss right now? Right, right. Um, so uh, you can you can catch my D and D show streaming Monday nights called Dark and Dicey on the Wizards Twitch channel. Um, let's see, uh, shows wise, games wise, I'm trying to dig for things that I can actually talk about. Um, soon in the next couple months, there will be a flood tide of things uh, that come out. Um, but it's all for the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was weird, like, sitting through E3 and hearing myself die several times <laughs> during all the trailers. Like, every once in a while, you just hear me screaming, and you're on fire also, and I got my arm cut off or whatever. So I'm like, oh, there's a thing I can't talk about ever. Um, but but uh, I, I can't bring them up now, but please expect a bunch of things. Yeah, later this year, uh, all of them will come out all at once, you know. I'm sure my I'll, I'll be spamming my Twitter over and over again about it. Uh, but please keep an eye out for that, but otherwise I can't talk about much right now. And following up with that, where yeah. can we follow you online and what's the final message you want to get to the wonderful fans that have given you love and support especially during your unfortunate health scare just recently <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. I, I'm mostly on Twitter at KG Tang. I do have a Facebook page, uh, KG Tang Voice Monkey. I update it less than I should. Um, uh, so yeah, please follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Instagram too at KG Tang. And uh, for the fans out there who who stuck by me for for that scary health episode, and everyone, uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I I hope to continue to do uh, good work, and um, I hope to continue to produce the quality of work that you guys expect and deserve. For you know, you know, you put money into something, you deserve good work back and that's why I always believed um, and so hopefully I can continue to do that for for years to come and it's it's my life's passion aside from my wife um, and um, yeah uh, that's it's all I want to do and hopefully I'll keep doing it yeah. hey man again thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me this weekend thank you so much no problem man thank you it was a great time yeah